David, I thought you quit. After everything I've been through this week, I deserve this. Besides, it's an e-cigarette. Does that mean it kills you faster or slower? Slower. Plus it glows blue. That's just a bonus. Whatever. I'm still impressed by how you saved her ass this week. No shop talk. I survived my first firing Friday. I don't want to hear about work again until Monday morning. It's just that we really needed that one. Why? Ah, no shop talk. Fair point. Why? Well, I should know better than to tell you this, but Carly's absence this week is not the real reason why she got fired. Well, I should hope not. She's also rude, lazy, hard to work with. I've got a list somewhere. Yeah, well, here's the kicker. She forgot to file some paperwork for Carter last month. Important paperwork, I assume. Well, let's just say I have my work cut out for me when we get back on Monday. That sounds ominous. Sort of. She forgot to renew our licensing. Carter found out this week it'll expire at the end of the year. <laughs> There's gotta be a way around that. <laughs> There's plenty of ways around that, but they all cost money. Well, what about the funds from the Cleaver Estate? It's no good. It has a very specific designation. We can build, open, and staff the new wing, but we can't run it without the proper licensing. Sounds like we'll all be busy Monday. You two better get back in here. David has me a drink. <laughs> Thank you. I knew you wouldn't get fired. Well, that made one of us. <laughs> hey, how was your mom's birthday? I keep forgetting we're both Scorpios. That you were a Libra. Mm -hmm. I'm on the cusp, but I have much more Scorpio-like tendencies. And that sounds like bullshit. Yeah. Oh, good, because it totally is. <laughs> anyway, it was fine. When was your mom's birthday? Yesterday. That's why she missed the ball. One of many reasons. You could have brought your mom. Yeah, because something says happy 65th birthday, like discussing positive animal reproductive habits over a vegan salad and schwaz. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Carly picked the menu. She did? It's on the list. So, you seem to know the bartender. You call him? He's my roommate. I've known him since college. Really? Yeah, why? You should introduce me. I should? Oh, I, I, I should. Yes, right. Uh, uh, hey, Colin. Uh, yeah, what's up? You need more popcorn? Uh, yes, actually, but come here. I want you to meet the gang. Oh, you're in a gang. Just for that, I'm not doing dishes for a week. How would that be any different? <laughs> anyway, this is Alan, my smoking buddy and enabler. Hey, man. And this is Sandy. Hi, Hugh. Hi. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. So you work with David? Yeah. All right, cool. Uh, I've always loved animals. Ever since I was a little girl, my mother always kept cats on our farm. Daddy died when I was 15, and with the Great Depression and everything, Mom decided to sell the farm and move to the city. We had to take most of our cats to the local shelter. Even though I couldn't keep them with us, I volunteered at the shelter to help them out. One day, I came to the shelter and found that the cats we brought were gone. They told me they had been put down to make room for the incoming animals. I was horrified. I cried for weeks. That's when I decided I couldn't let it happen ever again. I worked tirelessly with the 16 staff members to make sure that we changed the policy to keep that from ever happening again. By 1950, we had implemented a policy that no animal would ever be euthanized because it hadn't found a home. Sandy, you're not gonna... I could kiss you. The hardest thing for any animal is to be alone. What we do at the Chicago Humane Society is do our very best to help each animal feel loved and wanted. Your help is invaluable in giving us the tools, the funds, and the support we need to help every single animal find its place in the world. <laughs>